Laser cutters are amazing and a wonderful addition to any type of shop. We use ours here in our prop and costume making shop nearly every single day. And today, I'm gonna to show you all the basics that you need to know to get started using a laser cutter. Hey there, fellow maker, Bill here. Welcome down to my shop. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use a laser cutter. Now, every brand of laser cutter has their own software and their own hardware, but the basics are all pretty much the same. So we're gonna get started by drawing a pattern to use on our laser cutting machine. Let's head over to the computer. Here I am at the shop computer. This is Inkscape. This is what I use to draw all of my vector files for both laser cutting and for vinyl cutting. You can use whatever you want to draw your vectors like Illustrator. I like Inkscape because it's free. A uh, good practice is to set your document properties to be the size of your laser cutter uh, area. Mine is 20 inches by 12 inches. So if I zoom out, we can see that is the area I have to work with. Plenty of room to do this little test cut. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about Inkscape, I've got a couple other videos, including a premium video over on punishprops.com. Something to keep in mind with your laser cutter, the laser beam has a kerf, it has a width. So everything you cut will end up being just a tiny bit smaller than uh, what you tell it it's gonna be in your measurements. So just keep that in mind. As far as the operations you can do with the laser, we've got a vector cut, we've got a vector etch, and a raster etch. Vectors are paths. So these lines that I've drawn here in Inkscape are paths and the laser will just follow that along using the power and speed settings you've told it. The vector etch is the same as a cut, it's just lower power so it doesn't cut all the way through. And then the raster etch will go back and forth across like the print head on your Inkscape printer and do multiple passes to carve out a big chunk of the surface. So I've separated those operations using different colors. I filled these areas with black with no outline and I filled the text with black, again, no outline. That way the laser cutter software will know to do a raster on that. And then the other lines have just assigned a color so that in the laser cutter software I can assign an operation to those different colors. Finally, some laser software required that your line have a specific weight. For these, I've set to 0.24 millimeters arbitrarily because my software doesn't really care unless it's too small and it just won't show up. To send this design over to my laser cutting software, I just go to print it. I'll print and my installed software shows up as full spectrum engineering driver. I double click that and it sends this over to the cutting software. In my software, the first panel we see is the raster engrave operation. That's separate from the vector cut. We'll get to that in a second. For the raster engrave, I want to change the black and white threshold to get rid of everything except for what I want to etch. I also have a power and a speed setting, so I can make it go slower if I want it to uh, cut deeper, and I can have it go less powerful if I want it to be a really light pass. So that's rasters. Vectors are those paths. The laser is going to follow these paths. You can see the different colors we assigned earlier. Also the filled in black areas got assigned a black outline. I don't want to etch those. So over here, I'm going to tell it to do zero passes. My options are speed, power, and passes. By setting that to zero, that means that it will do zero passes on these black outlines. The next thing to think about is which of these operations I want to happen first. I would like to do the blue vector one first, so I'm going to set that to one, and I'll set the red to two. So it will do this one first, then that one second. Some laser software packages have built-in material settings for different materials and different thicknesses. Mine doesn't have that. I have to go kind of more manual here. So for the blue, I'm gonna keep the speed at 100%, but I'm gonna change the power to one. That's right, just 1% power. I plan on cutting this out of EVA foam, and it's not very dense compared to things like acrylic plastic or wood. So one will leave a nice shallow etch on all of those blue lines. Red, on the other hand, I'd like to cut it all the way through. And in this case, I'm just gonna leave it at 100% speed and 100% power with one pass. If I had a thicker, denser material and I needed to cut deeper, I could set the speed down to 50 or slower, leave the power at 100%. And if that's not enough, I can slow it down even more or have it do multiple passes. So I'll set this back to 100%, check that everything is good, and then head on over to the laser and get cutting. This is my fifth generation full spectrum hobby laser that I bought uh, three or four years ago. and It's been really great. The sounds you hear are an air pump to blow air down on the cutting surface to put out 
fires, and a water pump to pump water coolant through the laser tube to keep it nice and cool during the cutting process. First thing I wanna do with my laser is to home it. I push a button, it goes and homes itself so it knows where it is, and then I can get everything set up. Today I'm gonna to be cutting EVA foam. You can cut all sorts of stuff like wood and acrylic plastic. Nothing with PVC in it though. PVC is bad. I'll link to a list of a bunch of materials that are good for laser cutting. But for today, we're doing EVA foam. So step one, I'm going to use my keyboard here to move the laser over. Then I need to set the lens height. Now for this machine, it's a very manual process. I've got a thing here. I loosen my lens head and set it in there and tighten it down. This ensures that the laser is focusing on the very top of our surface here so that the beam is as strong as possible. Also, for this particular material, it's bowing a little bit, so I've got a little piece of metal I'm gonna set down to hold it nice and flat. If the material bows and the laser distance changes over a cutting path, it will not perform optimally. Before I get to cutting, I wanna make sure that I have enough material and I'm positioned in the right spot, so I push a button on my keyboard, and sure enough, you can see that it went below the material. That's bad, so I need to reposition everything so that the laser will not go off the edge of my material. All I have to do now is turn on the fume extractor. That's really important. Big tube back there, big fan that pulls all of the nasty fumes from the cut away from me and outside my house. Okay, I'll do a pre-flight check here, make sure everything is good, check. That's still good, and then I hit the button, and it should now do the raster cut. That was operation number one. That is the raster. It took about five minutes. And by the very nature, rasters tend to take quite a bit longer than vector cuts or edges. Now I'm gonna do with the other operations on here, I wanna make sure I don't move my material at all. So I'm not gonna touch that. If I moved it, it would be pretty much impossible to get it back in the same spot to do other operations that line up with what I've already cut. So the next thing I'm gonna do is kick off the vector operations. It should do those blue lines as an etch and then go around the perimeter and cut everything out. Here we go. For good measure, I ran the outside twice just to make sure it was cut all the way through. Now that I know I'm done with all my operations, I can go touch my material. That falls right away. And there's our cutout piece. Here, let's take it to the bench and see how it turned out. Mm. There is our foam laser cut piece. So the raster did the engrave on this part here and the text, it looks really nice. Think of rasters like doing that paint bucket fill. That's kind of what we did there. And then the vector etch at 1% power left these nice shallow lines along the perimeter there and around the badge. And then the vector cut, cut all the way through on our side. Now I ran it twice. You can kind of see that the first pass wasn't quite deep enough. So I did two passes and it cut it right out. If you were doing this same pattern on a different material like wood or acrylic plastic, then you may have to tinker with the settings a little bit. I recommend if you use one material often or one thickness of material often, you write down some notes so that you know exactly what settings you need to do that material frequently. And that is everything you need to know to get started doing laser cutting. We use our laser for all sorts of stuff in our prop and costume making, especially anything you need multiple copies of. So for example, the finger bits on this gauntlet here are all cut out of foam. I needed like 50 of them and it was really great to draw one of them and have the laser cut out all 50. You could totally cut these out by hand, but if you have a laser, it's awfully handy. I also use it for cutting out things like circles because it can draw a perfect circle. Lasers are also awesome for etching designs into acrylic plastic to make heads up displays for your costume or for cutting out lenses for goggles. And if you wanna make something look super, super legit, you can etch text into the surface. Not only does this make perfect looking text, but it's etched into the surface and looks like it was made on a machine because it was. 
Like I said before, you can cut a whole bunch of different materials. I'll have links down below to the stuff you should and shouldn't cut on your laser cutter. I mostly use it for wood, acrylic plastic, styrene plastic, and EVA foam. Again, no PVC. Don't cut PVC, don't cut Sintra. Also remember that this cut goes straight down. You can't cut bevels on it. At least not with super simple operations. There are some goofy tricks you can do that I might get into in the future. It's also not considered dimensionally accurate the way a CNC mill might be. So you can get things really, really close to dimension, but not perfect. But since I tend to work in bandsaw tolerances, then the laser is just right for me. Now I know what you're gonna ask, Bill, I don't have a laser cutter. They're really expensive. Don't worry. There are now lots and lots of local maker spaces that will let you use their laser, either for a membership fee or a one-time fee. I also know Glowforge just started sending out their machines, so odds are good you actually know someone who already has a laser cutter. So if you swing by their place with a six pack of beer, I bet you can persuade them to let you cut out a couple of foam pieces for your next costume. And if you don't have that option, then there are online services like Pinoco who will laser cut stuff for you. Yes, this is a little bit pricey, but you have to decide, do I wanna cut out 200 circles by hand or pay a machine to do it? It's up to you. There you go, thank you so much for checking out the video. Hopefully you learned a couple things about laser cutting. Like I said earlier, a lot of the operations here can be applied to things like a vinyl cutter, mostly those vector cut paths. Those can be translated basically right to your vinyl cutter if you've got a Silhouette Cameo or something like that. If you have any additional questions about laser cutters, let me know down in the comments. I'll be sure to get back to you. And of course, if you've made anything really cool using a laser cutter or any other cool proper costume making project, please share that with me. I love seeing pictures of your projects over on Twitter. I'm at Chinbeard. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you again so much for hanging out with me in the shop and I'll see you in the next build.